But right here, you know, I'm sitting on probably at least a foot or two of uh, decayed uh, organic matter from the leaves that have been falling off these trees. And, uh, you know, we're, we're only about we're only about a mile and a half for Dobbins Air Force Base. And a uh, Black Hawk helicopter just flew over. They're going to go get some... Uh, they're going to go get some of those uh, fundamentalists uh, over there. Our fundamentalist guy up in Washington sending these. Uh, it's crazy. Okay, but let's just deal with the world as we know it, okay? Not the fantasy world that's, that's causing us a lot of problems and raising our taxes. Now, when when there is a crucifixion, when, 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 the, when there's this, I'm going to call it a waxing, when there's this waxing effect on the, on the energy and the matter, You know, like for instance, on the surface of planets, you get solid matter. This is this is granite. This is a barium ore that I took from a mine. It's very dense material. It's very heavy. Sometimes they put this into oil wells to displace the oil. It's very heavy stuff. I was up in uh, New York City uh, last month. A friend of mine gave me this uh, mineral specimen. It has uh, calcite pyrite and a, a greenish uh, gemstone like material in there. It's green because it has uh, uh, chromium in it in the, in the structure causes it to be green. But getting back to the life, I'm sorry, getting back to the life part of it, I was down in uh, Villa de Leyva, Colombia, Villa de Leyva, Colombia in English and a little boy walked up to me and said, you want to buy a fossil? And I said, yeah, I, yeah, I bought this little fossil. And I was walking out into the fossil fields where uh, there are a lot of fossils. And this little girl walked up to me and she said, you want to buy this? And I did. And you've seen this before. It's a, it's a stone with a, with a fossil inside with the inland sea area there. <clears throat> and a friend of mine who lives there was out looking for fossils and, of course, uh, found this... Uh, Indian artifact there. Should I say this on camera? But you know, locally here, uh, I found arrowheads. And there's a stream here. Actually, there are Indians in this area. This is a, a stone used for grinding, probably food stuff up by a human being. And uh, whoops. Well, this is a neat thing. This is a this is a uh, Neolithic. Arrowhead. This is a very, very rare, rare arrowhead. If any of you guys out there are experts on arrowheads, I bet you can't find that in the literature. It's made out of a red shirt. I'm not saying it couldn't be early woodland. But you know, the nicest thing that's ever been given to me is this simple little shell. This shell was given to me in a little little uh, island off the coast of Cartagena, Colombia by a little boy, a uh, little native boy. He must have been about 10 years old. And me and my wife had, had done a lot of things that uh, they appreciated. And as we were leaving, he gave me this shell. And this is a shell he had, he had buried in the sand underneath a coconut palm. And he probably could have sold this for 25 cents somewhere, but he gave it to me. That really touched me. That really, that really reinforced my optimism about humanity. But back to science, man. So all this stuff we're seeing is an effect of what we call the Big Bang. And uh, I think there's something missing in our theory, because theories always evolve and change. You know, and 500 years from now, it may not be called the Big Bang, but it'll be called something like the Big Bang. And evolution, well, it's still being called evolution, right? <clears throat> but as a biologist and someone who studies evolution, there's something about it that doesn't exactly fall into place. And that something is, there seems to be 
something more than just adaptation to niche to explain everything. And uh, now, in terms of the Big Bang up until this granite stuff, we can say, well, it's just, you know, but starting an evolution, if you look, now we only have this, this one planet to look at, so that's not much, but if you look at this planet, there tends to be a subtler and subtler expression of mind with the progress of time. And uh, I propose that what is happening is that nature is loosening its binding tendency on mind, not just matter. And the mind is becoming subtler and subtler through time. Now, granted, it's only a few, it's only a few species. I mean, Homo sapiens, I mean, we're just, you know, nothing. <clears throat> but, because uh, there's so many species. But, if you look at the big picture, something else is happening, you know? And so that's, I just want to bring this idea up. I'm going to cut this video short. We can talk about it more later. But this waxing and waning of this binding of energy and matter to a cruder, cruder state. And then it's almost like a counter revolution. And then a lessening and lessening and lessening and lessening of this binding effect, which is expressed in the biosphere. And so you have, you have astronomy, cosmology, and you have biosphere. And, and biosphere is very limited and, and it's not hardly noticeable. But it could actually be the other half of nature and, and the other half of the effect of nature. So that's it for me uh, now. Good talking to you. Uh, I wanted to share more about my personal uh, uh, experiences in life so you can get to know me a little bit better. And I don't, can't get to know you uh, because you're on the other side of the camera, but you know, talk to me send me your videos because I think it's important for us to come together and to try to move forward in this critical time in history when there's so many regressive movements happening. Very dangerous movements. And uh, so it's time for us to, you know, it's time for uh, uh, people who are enlightened or semi-enlightened or intellectual to move up to bat for humanity and, and let's see if we can uh, at the same time learn better science and at the same point help bring on a little bit of the age of enlightenment. See ya. Bye-bye.